Welcome to the magnificent city of Derby. This gorgeous grade one listed building behind me is indeed the old county jail. As you can imagine, a building of this age is full of stories of ex-prisoners and the odd execution. It's also owned by one of the most famous ghost walkers in Great Britain, the fabulous Richard Felix. We're going to go inside, meet Richard, and he's going to bring those stories to life. Please follow me. Hello, Richard. Simon, how are we doing? Nice to see you, and Richard. You, sir. After all these years. It's a pleasure to be back again, it really is. Pleasure to host you. Yeah, this building, it's absolutely fascinating, Richard. Now, I know you're renowned for your storytelling, and you've got three rather gorgeous, juicy stories from this fabulous building. I've actually got some built. As well. Yes. So I'll tell you what, I'll just finish my cup of Derbyshire tea, my mug of Derbyshire tea, and I'll, uh, I'll be out to you. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Richard. So, Richard, what a fascinating door. Just seeing these dates here sends a shiver up my spine. Yeah, so it should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the story behind well, all of the doors, they're, they're full of graffiti from the prisoners going right back to, to 1756. Gosh. Um, and this one, it has to be the piece de resistance, there's no doubt about it. Because you see, when I opened this place 23 years ago, um, and I put all the doors back and, and, and re revamped the place, re-bricked it because it was knocked to pieces as a, a nightclub. Right. And when we opened, a guy came in and told me that um, when they were working on this building, when they turned it into a nightclub years ago, the, the, the builders were pulling these doors off and pushing them down the side of the skips. Come on. Oh yeah. This, this history this is living in history. the skip. In the skip, oh, yeah. Richard. And he said to me, and actually my friend, he said, pulled one of them out to get home with him. He then took a photograph out and showed me a photograph of this door. Yeah. By the way, it wasn't him. It was his. It wasn't his mate. It was him. Right. There's no doubt about that. Right. And yeah. this was propped up against his sofa in his flat. Yeah. And I went ballistic because I saw straight away at the top here. W. Buxton. Oh boy, and oh my god, this door, because, because there's something very special. Because this guy is Derbyshire's Dick Turpin. My goodness. Um, a f well, not a famous highwayman, because nobody really knew about him at the time. But he was a gentleman highwayman, unlike Dick Turpin, who was a, a rogue, a oh, horse thief, a, piece of work. a gang member, a, a vagabond, mm -hmm. to be quite honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Whereas this guy was a real gentleman highwayman. Um, anyway, the guy disappeared, and that was it. And it took me 23 years 
to get this back. And I had a phone call during COVID, or my wife did, an old lady saying, would you like a door from Derby Jail? And it was her brother-in-law. He was dead, he'd been dead in his flat for three months and they'd gone in and this door was still in his living room. I was there straight away yes. with a van. Uh, I literally carried him myself. And as you can see, it is absolutely full mm. of graffiti from the from the prisoners. This is the door that they went through to, to, to the gallows. Right. And at the top of it, signed by William Buxton. Uh, amazing. Derbyshire's... That's the original yes. signature of... of and and really this well. here is, is what's called a penny dreadful. No, they weren't as big as this. But this is his confession. His life story, telling yes. the most incredible story of his of his um, wanderings around the country. Mm. Uh, he was he was tried at the Old Bailey, sentenced to hang, um, and respited, uh, put on a prison hulk, and escaped. He escaped from the prison hulk. Yes. What a determined character. Yeah. And then came back to Derbyshire and started his antics again. He started again. Yeah. Robbing the London to Manchester stagecoach. Gosh. Amazing. And on one of his adventures, he was he was caught, brought to Derby Jail, and put on trial again for highway robbery, and again sentenced to hang, taken to the condemned cell to await. And a lady of ill repute, uh, to whom he was intimate apparently, smuggled in a small pickaxe and a saw, and he sawed his way through his chains and was caught. Digging, digging his way out his way of this out. jail with a pickaxe. He must have been determined. Oh God, yeah. And he was then double chained. Right. Then another gentleman came in, pretending to be a relative, with more tools. But he bottled it and told the jailer, and he was imprisoned himself. And then poor old William Buxton, at the age of 26, was hanged. His wife turned up to the hanging in a funeral coach, dressed in black. Gosh, gosh. Richard, do you wow. think he did this? He left his signature on the day of his death. Yes, I'm sure. The day of his death. I, I presume because this is this was through this door, through this to, door the, to the gallows. The last time you'd see daylight. Yeah. Yeah. And and I presume. But what did he do it with? He, he must have had a knife. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hang on a minute. Think about this. And, and scratch so, the date. And scratch well. the date. And I, it really is. It, it's uh, a work of art, Mrs. It, it is a work of art, but a real piece of history. It's a real piece of history. Yeah. I'm so glad that it wasn't thrown in the skip. So am I. Yeah. Or pulled out of the and skip. And of course, it's come back to its home. Come back to its home. Yeah. Yes. And there's a book in this. Oh, there's got to be. Really mean this. The story, oh, his yes. story is his. his um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, his adventures are. Worth telling, yeah, yeah. And, and it's so wonderful that you know it, it's keeping history alive. In those 26 years, he crammed a lot in, didn't, didn't he? Just but what a oh, determined yeah. man, though. Oh, just a bit, absolutely yeah. determined, yeah. yeah. And hanged in 1780, gosh, and left his left his name on the door. And it's still here for us all to look at today, yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is an amazing yeah. piece of history. It is. And I have a feeling that his ghost is here as well. Right. I, I have this strange feeling about it. I'm not psychic or anything like that, but you know, it, it is amazing that after all these years, that it should come back here. Yes. Yeah. And I reckon he's around. Yes. Yeah. And, and he's worth telling his story, and I think he'd be quite happy for a book to be written about him. Derbyshire's Dick Yes, Turpin. without a doubt, but uh, what a brave lad as well. Wouldn't he just? Yes. yes. Me. Um, Richard, this is blood, gore, and horror. Just a bit. Big time. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is to do with the Murder Act of 1752. Uh, because the situation was 222 hanging offences, right? So you could be hanged for stealing a sheep, stealing a cow, shop breaking, house breaking, poaching, shooting rabbits, and murder. Well, Hang on, this was a bit unfair. So, for instance, we've got a young lad, 26 years of age. He's got four kids. His wife's pregnant with the fifth. They're starving. Him and his wife stopped eating two weeks earlier just to give the scraps of anything they get to the children. So off he goes up to Kedleston Hall here in Derbyshire, into the woods with his gun, shoots three rabbits. He's caught by the gamekeepers, brought to Derby Jail, put on trial for poaching, which is a hanging offence. Terrible. Brought back here, put in the condemned cell to await execution, knowing that oh, not only he's going to die, 
but his children were starving anyway. They're going yes. to die. No dad, no breadwinner. Wife mm -hmm. can't go out to work. She's pregnant. So his children will die. He knew that, waiting for the executioner. Then we've got another lad. Um, in fact, Joseph Wielden, who hacked his niece and nephew to death with a gorse hook, which is for hedging. Mm -hmm. The little boy of, of eight put up a fight, hacked him to pieces, and the little girl of four, he beheaded. Gosh. He was brought here to Derby Jail, put on trial for murder, sentenced to hang. Guess what? They were both hanged. This was so unfair. Two different offences. So unfair. Yes. That yes. in 1752, they realised they needed to create a punishment for murder that was worse than all of the other 221 mm. offences. And with the help of the church, God bless them, they came up with the Murder Act of 1752, which stated that no murderer was allowed to be buried. So no closure, no six foot of English earth, no gravestone with your name on it, mm. no family around the grave, no Christian burial service to lay you to rest. But what are we gonna do with the body? So the sentence of death for the murderer after 1752 was that you be taken back from this courtroom to a place of lawful execution and from there hanged by the neck until you are dead and then publicly dissected Gosh. in the Shire Hall in, in, uh, in Derby uh, the sh or the Surgeons Hall, London, Lancaster or, or Edinburgh. So you were taken back, laid on a slab or, or a dissecting table the first thing they did was wired you up to a battery. Not, 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 not a uh, three AA batteries, mm -hmm. but a huge vat of water with zinc towers and copper and wires. And they wired you up and the chest heaved. Uh, the leg would go up in the air. The, the face would, would sometimes grimace. People fled. They ran in terror. The body's coming back to life. Well, they weren't far from the truth, were they? How do we bring back people back to life? Defibrillation. I know. Exactly. Yes. Electricity. Mm -hmm. Guy in Derby, Dr. Erasmus Darwin, grandfather of Charles Darwin, mm -hmm. doctor, dissected murderers here in Derby, fascinated by electricity. When Mary Shelley wrote the, the, the novel Frankenstein, the preface of the book clearly states the inspiration for this novel was Dr. Darwin of Derby. Gosh. And gosh, it was... Mm -hmm. oh, not far from the truth. Anyway, basically what happened was, laid you on the slab, galvanised you as it was called, galvanised, electric. Mm. Then, after that, they flayed the body. They, they ripped off the skin, sent it to the local tan yard here in Derby, in Full Street, tanned the skin and used it to buy books, telling oh, of your life and trial. Mm -hmm. If there was a big enough piece of skin, a pair of slippers for the local mayor Gosh. as a souvenir. Yeah. So after flaying the body, skinning it, the mm -hmm. next thing was that the bones were boiled in a big cauldron to get the meat off them and then sent, sent to a, a skeleton maker, wired up and made into a, a, a skeleton. Um, most old skeletons in, in universities and right. hospitals right. are of hanged people, yeah. old ones. Was there a market for this though, Rich? Oh gosh, yeah, big time. Oh, yeah. Furtherance of medical science. Right. See, that's the medical big science. One. Oh yeah. yeah. You know the bits were removed, examined, cut up, put into bottles and jars, carved up for the furtherance of medical science. So it did have a, a purpose, mm. very much yeah. so. Yeah. Um, but the punchline of this story, Simon, is the body wasn't whole, and that meant on the day of judgment, no material resurrection for you. And where are you going to go? Straight to hell. And burn in hell fire for how long? Eternity? How hot? 10,000 degrees centigrade with gnashing of teeth, ripping of flesh, all the terrors of Dante's Inferno. They knew all about this. They were terrified, not of death, Must have been. but of the afterlife, yeah. knowing full well that they weren't getting, getting in through the pearly gates. They were certainly not going to burn in hell for eternity. So guess what? I'll stop here, thanks. It's caused ghosts that have stayed behind because they were terrified of divine retribution, hellfire and damnation. And terrified of going to the next world. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Death right. was commonplace. It's where he went next, yes. which was paramount. Which would have been a fear. A terror beyond death. Yes.
Well, Richard, it's been absolutely fascinating. What a great job you've got. Oh, God, I have. Come on. You know, being custodian, for want of a better word, of, of a place that's got such a history yeah. behind it, it is, it's uh, very rewarding. And I'm finding new stuff out about the place all the time. It's living history here, it isn't is, it? Really? Literally. Absolutely. Richard, so groups can come here. Oh yeah. Can they book with you directly? Oh yeah, absolutely. We do ghost walks, we do night night vigils here. Um, I do talks, I don't lecture, but talks on things like that. Um, and um, yeah, all they've got to do is go to richardfelix.co.uk. Absolutely marvellous. And of course, you can also enjoy some real Derbyshire tea and get the flavour of Richard Felix.